Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church. Well, we're here at my lake house. It's 4th of July this weekend, so let's make some ribs. Well, we did a brisket Memorial Day week and you guys blew that up on our YouTube channel. We know tons of you are gonna be making ribs this weekend. So we're gonna go with a pretty simple cook. We're gonna change up some flavors. We're starting out here with just a simple rack of St. Louis cut ribs. Uh, so a full spare cut down into St. Louis, very common, especially coming out of the competition world. This is what you see a lot of videos on. Um, these are Prairie Fresh, got them at my local grocery store. But when I pick out racks, I look for thickness and I look for marbling. And so these are pretty good looking. Also try to find straight bones on the back because when you go to cut your ribs, they're just a lot easier to slice and nice and uniform. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the membrane. I just get a paper towel, it's dry, uh, to grab hold of that membrane, peel it up, and then peel her off. All right. So now let's trim them up. These don't need a whole lot. You could season these and just put them right on if you want. I like mine to cook even, so I'm gonna cut the ends off. Again, it's optional. Get rid of any excess fat. Just kind of square them up here just a little bit. So I've got my Meeson chef knife here. I usually go down to this last rib because this is really thin meat. And I usually will cut that off. If you can't see it very well, then come over here to the bone side and a lot of you might say, hey, that's, that's wasted meat. You certainly don't have to cut that off. While I'm on this side, I'm going to go ahead and cut away this flap. Anything you cut away, you can certainly cook and use. So it's always, like I say, your choice how much you want to cut off there. Pick up this uh, excess fat here and just kind of fillet that away. That way you can build better bark. And then I like to square mine up. So I'm just gonna take just a little piece here off the end. And I'm gonna take this last bone off right here. Just a little more even. And then I don't like corners. I'll kind of round it out here. Trim away anything hanging off because that's not going to cook right. There we go. Nice, beautiful rack of ribs. Going to cook super even. Get rid of all that. Okay, so let's talk about seasoning. Lots of options in the Meat Church arsenal. We're gonna do something we've not done on a video before. We're gonna use our holy voodoo. Gonna go nice and simple. Not using a binder, honestly, cause I'm at my lake house and I'm out of mustard. Otherwise, I'd put a little mustard on here. I'm gonna season on the bone side first. Season with whatever you like, but I go pretty liberal with this seasoning. I wanna cover the meat really well, pat it on. And I talk about this a lot in my rib cooks. I will season no more than one hour uh, before I cook because the salt in here will pull the moisture out of the meat So I don't like to do this the night before like I like to do with some of my bigger cuts We're going super simple with this Could have done a lot of things if you're a meat church guy you could have used honey hog holy gospel the gospel honey bacon Or maybe you make something you like so I'm just gonna pat that in I love the flavor profile of holy voodoo. It's a little sweet heat. It's got just a slight kick we're definitely going sweet heat today. We're gonna to make a peach habanero rib. Uh, we're gonna use some pepper jelly later today that we got at first Monday here in Canton uh, recently. And you guys know I love womp sauce. I'm gonna show y'all how we combine that. But we're gonna let these sweat out. I've got three more racks I'm gonna prepare. So I'm gonna get on to working on those. Let these sweat out and we'll be back and we'll start cooking. All right guys, we got all the ribs prepped. We've let them sweat out for about 30 minutes as you can see how nice and wet these are. 
so it's time to start cooking them. So today we're cooking on a Traeger Timberline XL. You could obviously use any type of smoker you like. In fact, I got a mill scale outside, but the great thing about the Traeger is I'm here at the lake and I can monitor this from my phone while we're doing all sorts of stuff for the kids. So I'm cooking at 275 degrees. I'm gonna start loading these up while we talk. 275 degrees with meat church pellets. You know, if you're using wood, hardwood, uh, I would go hickory, pecan are my favorites. The meat church pellet is a blend of oak uh, and hickory. A little more room here. All right. Let's talk about the cook process. So I usually do about a four and a half hour rib at this temperature. Again, I'm at 275. You could go a little lower if you want. You go hotter if you want. It's really no big deal. It's just kind of whatever you want to do. But at 275, I'm gonna cook for about two hours like this and then I'm gonna wrap, probably about two and a half hours actually. We're gonna be looking for color. When we get that beautiful, bright color that we want, before it starts to turn dark, we're gonna wrap them in foil. We're gonna put a little bit of stuff in the foil and go another two hours after that. So we're gonna let these roll. I'll see y'all back. I'm not gonna do a thing. I'm not even gonna spritz them. I'm going on the lake. We'll see y'all in two, two and a half hours. All right, guys, why these ribs are cooking, let's talk about this Misen Chef knife. You guys ask me all the time, what types of knives do you use? Well, the thing I love about this Misen Chef knife, it's made from super high quality materials like high grade stainless steel. So it holds an edge for a long time and you get the knife for a fraction of the price of other premium knives that are out there. It's super versatile too. This is meant to replace a whole set of knives. You guys have seen what we've done today. Uh, we've trimmed our ribs with it. We've prepared the stuff to go in the wrap. You're gonna see me slice the ribs with it later. In fact, it's pretty much the only knife I use out here at the lake house. I've used it from all sorts of things like thinly sliced onions for smash burgers, diced up all my vegetables real small for a pico de gallo that we make. I've sliced tons of steaks with it and barbecue again, like you're gonna see here in just a little bit. But if you guys hit the link in the description below this video and use promo code MEATCHURCH, you'll get 20% off your first order with Misen. Again, link in the description, all capital letters Meat Church for 20% off your first order. All right guys, these ribs have been cooking for about two and a half hours and we're kind of cooking them to color. So I'm gonna show you that here in just a second but we're gonna get them in a wrap now. So you wrap for a couple reasons. One, to protect that color, and two, if you wanna put stuff in the wrap. And this is all up to you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little brown sugar in. I'm gonna put some uh, habanero sauce in, a little hot sauce. You can use whatever you like, but this yellow bird habanero is really good, and we have it in our fridge out here. And I'm gonna put a little butter for richness. This is, a, get yourself a good butter. This is a, a salted butter from Costco. And I just like to put four or five pats per rack. So we get the Misen chef knife out again. So I go with two heavy duty pieces of foil. Let's get these ribs. Looking pretty, look at those. They're puffing up, really pretty color. So again, I'm ready to go uh, into the wrap. All right, so let's let's get our butter here. Looking like a pancake. That looks good to me. Peel that off. A little brown sugar. I don't do too much. Just a little. Got to be careful when people send me pictures of their ribs and they've turned really dark, you've used too much sugar, maybe too much honey or agave, or you've cooked them too long or too hot. Just a little bit of this habanero, because I'm going for that sweet heat, and it's that simple. I'm gonna wrap them up. So you could go meat up or bone up in here. This is a preference thing. So if we put, I'm gonna put this in just like this, and you'll see, obviously this stuff will kind of melt down over the ribs. Um, if you go meat down, it's kind of swimming in it. It's kind of whatever your preference is. But back in we go. And I'm going to do these other three racks. These are probably going to cook about two hours. We're going to be opening the foil at an hour and a half and looking for the bones to be popping out about a quarter inch. Then we'll start probing them with our instrument thermometer to check for doneness. 
and we'll be on to the last stage, which is going to be glazing. So we'll see y'all back here in a little bit. Let's make a glaze for these ribs. So instead of just putting straight barbecue sauce on, I like to kick it up a little bit. I'm going to start with my favorite meat bench womp sauce, and I don't measure, but I'm just putting enough in here for four racks. And since I'm making more of a glaze, I'm going to put a little bit of my local Burleson's honey in here. Honey will thin it out, add a little natural sweetness. So that's probably like, I don't know, three to one or so. And then start the show here. This is some just peachy habanero jam that I got at first Monday in Canton uh, this year from a nice little lady, Granny's Gourmet and Gifts, uh, 6112 Birch Hill Road in Watauga, Texas. But I got it at first Monday. She had a couple uh, pepper jelly, she had a strawberry, and she had a peach habanero. You guys know I like Texas pepper jelly rib candy, uh, but I thought I'd show you something that you can get at the store or this would be an even better story. So I'm gonna go a couple of these. Look at all those seeds. Bloop. I'm just gonna give it a little stir here. Now you could heat this up on a stove top or whatever you wanna do because I want this to come together. I want these flavors to meld together. It's already nice and combined, so it's obviously a little thick, but I'm gonna set it in the Traeger and warm it up. And then I like to apply my glaze like the last 10 minutes of the cook. So my ribs are they're pretty well done at this point, and I'm just gonna glaze them and let the sauce lock in. So let me put this on the Traeger for 10 minutes, and then we will sauce. Okay guys, let's get these ribs glazed. So these ribs, they finished in just over an hour and a half, probably because I trimmed them down so they're not, they weren't real huge. And you could see their bones protruding, like I said, that's a telltale sign that you're getting close. So I like to come in here and probe in between. I'm 208, so with my instant read thermometer. You can also just kind of do this by feel, but I know that these are done. So I'm gonna make a nice little boat here because I'm gonna put this back uh, in the Traeger when they're glazed. This is a good way to keep your grill clean, your smoker clean, whatever you got going. Okay. Let's, you can see their consistency. It's really thin, really melded together. Um, you could spoon this on if you want. I usually will use, I love Thermaworks silicone brushes here. And I don't like to brush on because you'll leave brush marks. I always say you eat with your eyes first. I'm trying to make this nice and pretty. Of course, you can brush it if you want to. Be light about it. I have to just a little bit. So I just want a good even coating all over these ribs. I want these suckers looking like a show car. Once you have them nice and coated, we're just gonna go right back in to the Traeger. And all we're doing is tacking up this sauce or locking it in. So you're talking 10, 15 minutes until it looks good to you. Because if you didn't do that, you'd slice these ribs right now, this barbecue sauce would just run down your face. So we just wanna tack it up here. And our whole sweet heat is gonna be complete. Whew, those look nice and pretty. Got some of those habanero seeds on there. All right, back in we go, and I'm gonna sauce these other three. Let the sauce tack up, and then we'll meet you back here on the fancy Americana Rosewood block to see how we did. Let's get these ribs out of the Traeger and let them cool off. Whoo, those look pretty, and they smell awesome. Twenty-four ounces of hand cramping cold America, right there. All right, let's see how we did. Can't wait anymore. That mizen made easy work of those ribs. Woo! Look at that smoke ring. Man, big old thick meaty rib. Damn. Man, that's good. Voodoo ribs. I'm a fan. That sweet heat will let you know it's there, not too hot. The effect I want is I want to take a bite of a rib 
I don't want it to be sweet. And then two, three seconds, I want to feel the sizzle. That's the sweet heat I'm looking for. And that definitely got us there. I mean, serious smoke in there. The meat church pellets on the Traeger Timberline XL. But that cook, you know, was super easy. It was just over four hours. Anybody could do that for 4th of July. Or heck, if you're watching this after, do it whenever you want. But hey, I brought the proper uniform today. The beer, the amazing American flag cutting board, the backdrop at the lake. This is what it's going to be on 4th of July for the Pittman family. If you guys like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. This is part of our hardcore barbecue series. This is season two of that. So if you hit the playlist at the end of this video, there's gonna be all kinds of barbecue options for you guys in there. Briskets, beef ribs, country star ribs, baby back ribs, Alabama white sauce chicken, all kinds of stuff for 4th of July. Thank y'all, see you next time.